I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering and data analytics. In this episode, we're going to return to our Microsoft Access playlist and we're going to talk about how to use the sleep function to pause the code uh, that we've written uh, for processing our data. And sometimes it's very handy to be able to, to pause your code, to wait for something uh, so that you know some other process can finish and, and uh, that can be very, very handy. And sometimes you, you have to do it um, depending on the environment that you're running your code in. Uh, now, uh, Sleep was not made available to the Microsoft Access uh, VBA uh, unless you do another kind of uh, a call to a DLL, which I'm going to show you today so that you can take advantage of that functionality. So without further ado, let's get to our Sleep function in Microsoft Access. Okay, so I'm going back to our Access development file here um, that we've used quite a few times and uh, I filtered it for the word sleep to get rid of the noise and we'll be making a sleep module here and saving it. Uh, so you'll go to a new, uh, your create tab and then uh, create a new module just as I did and uh, that gives us a, a new, a brand new module that we can, you know, use to demonstrate the, the sleep function. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'll make a quick um, loop here using using for next and uh, I'll do it inside a subroutine and uh, we can count to a hundred say and we can do that by uh, using our a variable here we'll use an integer and we'll just say uh, for i is equal to one to a hundred um, you know debug dot print um, I. And so what that's going to do is it's going to loop through there and it's just going to spit out as fast as it can, um, you know, 1 to 100. Um, so that's going to help us give a, a nice uh, reference here. So if I go ahead and I save that, um, I'll save it as our sleep module and, uh, and then we'll hit F5 and, uh, uh, or we can hit the, we can hit the, uh, the play button there as well and we'll see our results in the immediate window uh, just below here. So when I hit go you see it almost instantaneously uh, spits out 1 to 100 into the immediate window um, and that was like super fast um, and so uh, sometimes if you're processing record sets or you have connections that you know you know you have to wait for or, or things like that um, sometimes it's good to to put a little pause in between certain operations you don't have to do it inside of a loop you can actually um, uh, do it outside of a loop just in your regular code but what we're going to do is at the very top of our module we're going to declare a subroutine uh, uh, sleep and it's going to be in the library uh, the DLL kernel 32 and uh, and we can uh, we'll add the the uh, argument on it as well as it has a argument for milliseconds so you have to specify how many milliseconds uh, you would like your code to pause for or the code to sleep for and so you'll notice when I hit enter after that it recognizes that um, so now we have a sleep function uh, that's calling a DLL on your computer and it's going to use that DLL uh, to pause the code, the execution of the code, for however long it is that you'd like to do that. And so what I'll do here is I'll just put the, uh, the sleep subroutine. I'll call it. Um, I'll just say sleep. Uh, let's say 100 uh, instead of 1,000 here. 1,000 is kind of long, I think. And uh, I'll put... 100 milliseconds as our comment there and you'll sort of see a little bit of a break so I'll save that and I'll hit F5 and uh, that's going to uh, you'll see that now it doesn't kind of go quite as instantaneously as it did before um, you'll see it kind of locks up because um, I clicked in and out of the screen there uh, but it is pausing the execution until it gets to 100 
and that's something that we, uh, you know, we definitely uh, we want to see, and we can change it to say 200, and then you'll see it's even more, it's even slower now, um, and we could even put like five seconds in between, put 5,000, and it would take a really long time, uh, but you kind of get the idea um, that uh, it's very handy. It slows down the code, um, although it it does kind of uh, uh, it can cause it to freeze. Uh, it looks like it's frozen, but it's not really. Um, and uh, so what you can do to prevent that is you can throw a do events after each time around or as an option, like every 10th time or every 100th time around, you could do a do events and it'll bring it out of that freeze if it does freeze and it'll pass control back to Windows. So here you can see I've clicked do events. I can click while it's running and it actually sets off the it's, it keeps printing the numbers, but they're out of, they're not, you know, in a direct line because I've clicked a whole bunch of times. And so it's passing the control back to Windows um, so that it knows that it's there um, and it's not frozen. Um, and uh, so do events is handy for that. <clears throat> Don't, you probably wouldn't use it every time around if you were doing like records or something like that, maybe every 10th time. Uh, but uh uh, what we can do is we can also, um, instead of just having this available in our module here, we can make it public to our to the rest of our project, available to the rest of our project, and uh, and we can um, cause our you know create a new module called module four in this case, and uh, <clears throat> so now what I can do is I can call that same sleep function from this module or if you had a form that you were using you know like you know you had a button that clicked and you needed to have a pause you could call your your sleep function from there and uh, my typing's terrible today and uh, there we go so we can we'll just do the same thing I'll just do uh, you know for i equals 1 to 50 uh, inside of a different module here module 4 and uh, I'll just debug that print the same way as I did and then uh, you know sleep and uh, I'll put 200 on there and and that should do it so I'll save that you can see it's a completely different module so we're calling the original sleep function that we declared as public and uh, there you go now you can see it's sort of going through it's pausing each time around and you'll see I did not put the do events on there so if I click around in here it kind of looks like it freezes until uh, until uh, the end of the count so we can we can get rid of that behavior by using do events uh, like I showed before now if I go click around you'll see it doesn't stop the execution um, it just keeps on plugging along but it does not look like it is frozen and that is how you use the sleep function to pause your VBA execution in Microsoft Access hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to use the sleep function in Microsoft Access. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet. And uh, click the bell when you see the bell and put any comments or questions in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.